Today, another former associate who's close to Donald Trump is facing a criminal prosecution. Thomas Barrack, a real estate investor who brokered Trump's 1988 deal to buy the Plaza Hotel in New York, was indicted on seven federal counts today. Prosecutors say that before Trump's election and during his presidency, Barrack secretly acted as an agent of the United Arab Emirates. Barrack, a longtime Trump friend, and yes, I know it sounds odd to hear Donald Trump has actual friends, was ubiquitous as a senior advisor during the 2016 campaign and later earned a reputation for putting the president together with Arab princes and potentates. But federal authorities say Barrack was doing a lot more behind the scenes. According to a 46-page grand jury indictment unsealed Tuesday, Barrack was acting as the UAE's eyes and ears in the Trump campaign and the administration. In May 2016, that indictment says Barrack and an aide provided Emirati officials with a draft of a Donald Trump speech on energy policy, which the Emiratis edited for Barrack. Using their notes, Barrack pressed to have a line added in the speech pledging that Trump would work with supportive allies in the Gulf. Trump gave that speech on May 26, 2016. At the same time, we'll work with our Gulf allies to develop a positive energy relationship as part of our anti-terrorism strategy. We'll work with them because we have to knock out terrorism. After Trump gave that speech, one Emirati official emailed Barrack, congrats on the great job today. Everybody here are happy with the results. There was much more, according to the indictment. To prepare for subsequent TV interviews, Barak asked the Emirati, Emirati officials what they would like him to discuss. He even worked with Emirati officials on a written strategy to get the UAE more influence over U.S. foreign policy. The relationship deepened that fall after Barak had allegedly set up an encrypted messaging app at the Emiratis' expense. He reportedly even let the Emiratis revise an op-ed he was writing on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. One wrote to Barrack's aide, saying that his bosses took issue with him using the term dictatorship in the column. Quote, they didn't like dictatorship's word, if you can say some of the governments or regimes, because they don't want to be also labeled as dictators. Surprise. Once Trump was elected president, the indictment says Barrack traveled to the UAE to coordinate strategy. He arranged meetings and phone calls with the White House. He reported back to the Emiratis on other White House meetings. And prosecutors say he even helped them lobby to try and get a sitting congressman appointed as the U.S. ambassador to the UAE. That congressman did not get the job and is not named in the indictment. In June 2019, FBI agents went to interview Tom Barrack. In that interview, they say he lied to cover up his UAE activities. That got him additional charges. He faces seven criminal counts in all, acting as an agent of a foreign government, conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and making four counts, and four counts of making false statements. Donald Trump is not implicated in this indictment, but Barrack is one of at least nine Trump campaign officials or aides who have been arrested on criminal charges. Five of those aides were pardoned by Trump before he left office. They include Paul Manafort, who had been brought on as Trump's campaign manager in the summer of 2016 when his presidential bid was flagging. A month later, Manafort resigned as his lobbying for foreign actors became an issue. Who in the world recommended that Trump hire Paul Manafort in the first place? According to reports, it was one man and his name was Tom Barrack. According to reporter Josh Dorsey of the Washington Post, a spokesman for Barrack today said he would not be said he would be pleading not guilty to all the charges and added that Barrack had quote made himself voluntarily available to investigators from the outset. So what does this indictment mean for Trump world and could any more arrests be coming, including for Barrack himself? with a separate investigation rolling on his handling of the Trump inaugural. Oh, and has there ever been a president surrounded by more people accused of committing crimes? Joining me now to discuss is Glenn Kirshner, a former federal prosecutor and an NBC News MSNBC legal analyst. Glenn, thanks for coming back on the show. This federal indictment is kind of bonkers. As a former prosecutor, what jumps out to you the most and how does this stack up to the foreign agent charges that Paul Manafort faced? Uh, I think what stands out to me, Matthew, is just how strong this is, because there are so many written communications that prove uh, Tom Barracks, not only his guilt of the seven crimes charged in this indictment, but his disloyalty to the United States. I mean, it's I'm still making my way through the 46 page indictment because each page infuriates me more than the last. But when you see that um, Tom Barrack was tasked by Emirati officials, national security officials, military officials, with making sure that 
he was a mouthpiece. He was a shill for you know the the UAE the, the um, UAE priorities. The uh, United States priorities didn't really matter one whit. And there's a word that pops up throughout this indictment, and the word is praise. His handlers in the UAE kept telling him, "We want you to praise this UAE official by name. We want you to praise." this policy that is a priority of the UAE. And then Tom Barrack would dutifully go out on national TV and do it, all the while hiding from the, the, the U.S. authorities that he was a foreign agent for the UAE. I mean, but the, the disloyalty there is pretty staggering. But Glenn, just to push back a bit, isn't the problem here that he's being charged with not registering as a foreign agent. It's not that what he did was uniquely bad or treacherous. The reality is Washington, D.C., a city you and I spend a lot of time in, is full of people uh, lobbying, acting as agents on behalf of foreign governments, including Middle East governments, praising those governments, getting U.S. officials to praise those governments. The reality is that his influence peddling, had he done it in a legal way... I mean, it wouldn't have been that different to what a lot of other people do. He's being accused of a crime because he just didn't register. Isn't that part of the problem that our whole system stinks? Well, it, it is part of the problem. And, and, and the real problem is when we have government officials that are supposed to be looking out for the interests of the United States of America, you know, they're supposed to put USA's interests first, not UAE's interests first. And if you are... A foreign agent if you are less concerned with what's good for our country and more concerned with what your handlers in a foreign country are telling you to do you need to register the FARA laws the Far foreign agent registration act laws are there for a reason yes he failed to register and that might sound like almost a, a ministerial oversight but he also was in a yeah. conspiracy to hide this from uh, US officials he also obstructed justice. He also lied to the FBI multiple times. The seven crimes for which he's been indicted carry 50 years in prison. So and this is not just, you know, failing to fill out a form. And not only is he not the first uh, Trump acolyte to be charged with a crime, Donald Trump seems to be surrounded by many, many people who are accused of breaking the law. But there's Michael Flynn, who was, uh, who, you know, was, was accused of acting as an unregistered agent for Turkey. Uh, there was, of course, Paul Manafort uh, with his shady lobbying. And I've got to say, I mean, number one, Donald Trump, it's amazing how he attracts these people. Uh, but number two, how much can we trust some of these people. The feds say Barak, whose family is originally from Lebanon, has Lebanese citizenship, was in the UAE as recently as March. He's a billionaire, has a private jet. Those countries don't have extradition treaties with the US. Prosecutors want him taken to Brooklyn. Uh, you're a former prosecutor. Take us inside what's going on here, what the fears are. Well, the fear is, you know, is he a flight risk? He certainly has the means to flee. So there will probably be a a vigorous argument about the conditions of his release, if any, and how we can, you know, guarantee that he will show up for his next court hear hearing if released. But, I, you know, I think if we pull back the 30,000 feet, because, you know, we're always interested in Donald Trump and whether anybody is going to cooperate against Donald Trump. And now, I mean, look at we've got Tom Barrack charged in, in a substantial federal indictment. We've got Alan Weisselberg charged in a substantial New York indictment. We've got Rudy Giuliani not yet charged. But a federal judge found there was probable cause to believe there's evidence of crime in his electronic devices. So the smart money is riding on Rudy Giuliani being charged in the near future. These men have to have to make a decision because Donald Trump will fall. Donald Trump will be charged and people will begin, I predict, to cooperate against Donald Trump. And these three men that I just named are holding one great big bargaining chip, and that is cooperating against Donald Trump. So. It may begin Glenn, to look like a race to the prosecutor's office. You, you say Donald Trump will be charged. We've heard that before. Let's see. The guy is Teflon. Um, one last quick question. We're almost out of time. What level of reading would Bill Barr have had on a case like this, given this investigation started under the Trump DOJ? It's three years in the making. He would have probably been briefed repeatedly. This would have gone up to the highest levels of the Department of Justice. 
So Bill Barr obviously knew about it, you know, how he handled it, whether he dragged his feet, whether he was fully supportive of what, you know, his prosecutors wanted to do when they were finding this evidence of text messages, encrypted yeah. messages that made it clear that Tom Barrack was violating the law. Maybe we'll find out someday how Bill Barr handled himself.